Thanks, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, there have been a number of high-profile corporate departures from Chicago, um, like Boeing moving to Virginia, Citadel moving earlier this summer. What impact do you think that those departures will have on budget revenues, and what is the city doing to keep corporate headquarters? Um, little to none. What I, th I think you also need to, to report is the number of corporations that have moved into Chicago that have made these investments. We had over 173 companies last year make pro-Chicago decisions. That's either moving here and relocating from someplace else um, or expanding their footprint in Chicago. We're on the same pace and may exceed that number this year. So, yeah, we, want, we don't want to lose any businesses, but um, I think you said uh, – you said Citadel, Boeing, and you mentioned one other. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that those companies choose to relocate, but I, what I'm focused on is the companies that are betting on Chicago, Google, um, Kellogg, uh, Abbott Labs, and others, and big, notable household names, international companies that are finding what they need here in the city of Chicago to keep our economy booming. We had a phenomenal 2021, and I expect um, we're continuing to see um, the recovery from COVID-19 flow into uh, 2022. If you walk around our city, you can feel it and see it for yourself. But importantly, the data tells us that Chicago is back, that our economy is booming, um, and those industries in particular, hospitality and tourism, that were very hard hit in 20 and 21, are seeing pre better than pre-pandemic um, uh, records on weekends, bookings, and so forth. So I feel very optimistic about our present and our future. Craig Wall. Mayor, off topic, if we could, um, another person has joined the race uh, to challenge you, another member of city council. Um, with the field continuing to grow, are there are political observers who think this is, uh, you know. Greg, Tribune. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor. The Sun-Times has a story about how Chicago Public Schools has been taking on more money that the city of Chicago traditionally pays. And it uh, looks, um, one of the open questions going forward, uh, especially for whoever the next mayor is, whether it's you or someone else, is how much uh, financial support will the city provide to CPS after it moves to an elected school board? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, I fully intend to be the next mayor. I fully intend to be, get reelected next year. Um, sorry to disappoint you. Um, look, there, there are significant financial entanglements between uh, the city and CPS. There always have been. And I, and I think one of the things that we've got to continue to do is make the case to the legislature about those financial entanglements. They vote for uh, an elected school board that essentially strips the city of Chicago from any role in governments but didn't provide a dollar for CPS to be able to exist without the support from the city of Chicago. So there's more work to be done. And then uh, uh, on the subject of the mayor's race, uh, Congressman Garcia is expected to announce th this week. He was up on your. He was up on the fifth floor today. He was outside taking uh, photos and video. Uh, what are your thoughts on being challenged by a candidate who you yourself voted for in 2015? And what do you think of his challenge to you? Well, what I think is today is a day for me to celebrate um, the passage of our budget because what it shows is um, that a mayor and a city council working together can do great things for um, our city. The politics will take care of themselves. Alice Tribune. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Appreciate it. Members of the press, uh, Alejandra and I will bring down the mics. Uh, two questions per reporters, and we'll kick it off with Heather Sharon, WTTW. Hi, Mayor. Hi there. Uh, you've committed to restoring trust between the Chicago Police Department and Chicagoans. How can Chicagoans trust the police to keep them safe if the department does not fire an officer who has lied to investigators about their ties to the Proud Boys, an anti-Semitic, anti-gay, far-right group whose leaders have been charged with sedition in connection with the January 6th insurrection? Thanks for killing the boss, Heather. Yep, that's my job. That's uh, honestly what that. they pay me for. Well, I, I think you over, overstate it. Um, obviously, that case was thoroughly investigated, I think not once but twice. Um, that officer was given a lengthy uh, period of suspension. Um, I don't get into the, the details of that, but I think it's about accountability. Um, and I think the police department uh, took the steps that the evidence that was gathered through the course of the two investigations um, warranted. Um, and from Marianne Ahern, she asks, there have been multiple reports that you've been having trouble getting enough petition signatures to get on the ballot for mayor. Is that accurate? No. 
Okay. No. Daily line. Go ahead. Hello. Um, so the Ethics Committee is still without a chair, and today um, Inspector General Deborah Witzberg said that not having uh, not having a chair kind of hinders the ability to um, it, you know, uh, uh, address issues that her office uncovers. Um, Alderman Matt Martin has proposed that he be chair. He's currently vice chair. Um, do you support him becoming chair, and are you concerned that the inspector general's office can't, you know, implement change or address changes that it uncovers without no, with, chair? With, with due respect to the IG, that's nonsense. Obviously, their work um, continues. I wish the work would continue at a faster pace. If you look at their aging report, they've got a number of cases um, that are now almost a decade old that I hope get resolved. But clearly, they're issuing reports, they're doing their audits. There's nothing, the Ethics Committee, by the way, didn't even exist until I created it uh, in uh, 2019. So the two simply don't go together, so I don't buy that. Okay, and multiple aldermen, including at least one of your chairs of a committee, have called for the creation of a Department of Environment um, instead of the six-person office under your office. Um, what are you doing to work with aldermen to stand up a department, and how will six people be enough um, to address So we've been in contact, issues? obviously, with the aldermen as we are on a regular basis. We routinely give them updates on uh, the work that's being done, um, and we've put more money and done more um, work regarding making sure that we've got a sustainable um, and environmentally uh, just uh, environmental policy, I think, than any other administration uh, in the city. So I feel very comfortable uh, with the work that we've done. I very, feel very comfortable um, with the uh, work that will be done, and we'll continue to work with the aldermen to make sure that we execute. Thanks, Mayor. Liz Nagy, ABC. Uh, Mayor, there's been a growing problem of abductions, attempted abductions, and armed robberies in this city, at least two attempted ones in the West Loop, Wrigleyville over the weekend. So what is your office doing to make people in this city feel safer? Well, obviously we're doing tons of things every single day to make people feel safer, but specifically with respect to those, uh, the detective division is actively uh, investigating, um, and we've got to make sure that, frankly, those are, are bona fide reports. Everything that you read on, on news blogs isn't truthful. I've seen things on there many times that are, have no bearing on reality, but we work hard every single day uh, to make sure that people feel safe uh, because they are safe. Um, that's why year over year we're down. 17% um, in homicides, 19% in shootings, and we continue to look for ways in which we can continue to improve on public safety all over the city. And on the note of public safety, red line CTA crime has also been a huge issue this year. Any update on that? Yeah, the, 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 the safety on the, on the CTA um, actually has uh, improved markedly, both because we've been pushing the CTA to step up um, what they're doing uh, with non-law enforcement resources, and we put more um, sworn personnel on the CTA, which is why we're seeing a decline in violent crime on the CTA. That's a wrap. Thank you so much, Mayor. Have a great one, everyone. As far as your re-election, we uh, see that Tom Tunney is passing petitions and also that Brandon Johnson has uh, CTU support. Do you have labor support? Are you confident in some kind of labor support? I'm very confident in my re-election, and I'm very confident that what you will see um, is a range of support across the city from all the sectors um, that we need it. We're, we're getting support from every single neighborhood. Of course, we have labor support. Um, they have their processes, um, which we respect. But I'm very confident in my re-election because um, if you look at what we've done, um, and you look at the vision that we have uh, for the city, you look at the success that we've had, um, whether it's um, bringing down um, uh, um, violence uh, year over year, 15 percent down in shootings, uh, almost 20 percent down in homicides, at a time when, frankly, a lot of other cities across the country continue to see increases, not decreases, the way in which we have uh, engage with community members to make sure that we're asking them what will it take to uh, bring safety uh, to your neighborhood, yeah, we've got more challenges on the public safety front, but we are fully actively engaged. And when you think about um, our economy, there's no place in the country, no place in the country that has a better economic uh, future and present than the city of Chicago. 
We are booming. We are open for business. And you don't have to take my word for it. Take the fact that already this year we have 120 uh, businesses that have made pro-Chicago decisions, um, many that have um, come to Chicago and continue to come from other places in the country, many that have expanded uh, their footprint and, frankly, are following uh, my lead in saying invest on the south and the west side. There's no other city in the country that is doing what we are doing on the economy, the, what we are doing in so, uh, stitching back the social safety net and meeting um, our residents uh, where they are, particularly those most vulnerable residents. You can't find a better example of what progressive, pragmatic um, uh, leadership looks like in the country than right here. Taman WGM. Hi, Mayor. I like what Marianne did just yeah. now, which was an on-topic question, and then I have a question I think we all are going to want you to weigh in on. So you, so you all are just breaking the rules. <laughs> As usual, right? As usual. Next May 20th is the, or May 20th of next year is the mayoral inauguration. Where do you envision we will be with your Invest Southwest program then? Well, well where I will be that day is getting sworn in for another four terms, four years. Um, and where, where we will be regarding Invest Southwest is $2 billion plus in additional investments. Um, we will have broken ground by then on probably five or six um, projects. Um, we've already got several um, that have shovels in the ground right now. We will continue um, to um, make sure that we make the investments in uh, streetscapes, in open spaces, green spaces. Uh, we will have a number of new um, pop courts. Um, uh, that's uh, public uh, plazas that um, we are very focused on um, reclaiming uh, vacant land. And I think what you're going to see is people saying, you know, the cynic said she couldn't do it. But we see the proof in the pudding because we're seeing the vertical rise of projects all across the 10 communities uh, that we focus on and invest Southwest. And yeah, that will be part of my inauguration speech. Could you tell us, Mayor, what happened at the police training facility on the west side? Did this, was this a training exercise for your security detail? No, um, it definitely wasn't a training exercise for my uh, security detail. Look, I don't want to get ahead of the investigation. I believe the police department is going to have um, a press conference at about 3 o'clock today. They'll provide more details. Um, obviously, it's early uh, in the, uh, the investigation. Uh, I think we have some sense of, of what happened, but I don't want to get ahead of uh, the work that the detectives are actively doing right now. But the police department will talk about it um, at 3 o'clock. Thanks a lot, Mayor. That concludes our q and I'm going to pass it off to uh, Michael Fasnock, who has some final remarks. Thank you, Mayor. Diane Borderless Magazine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, are all the migrants that came last night, uh, are they all requesting asylum? Um, I can't answer that question because, as I said, we're, we're, the conversations with them mm -hmm. um, just started today. Um, certainly, if that is their, their, their wish, that is the right. So um, we're, we're in the organizations that are here, particularly uh, the ones that deal with <clears throat> um, legal supports, uh, are going to be making sure they understand specifically what the objective is. Thank you for that. And uh, Governor Abbott's office said that they sent 95 migrants, but in the conference it was mentioned only 75 mm -hmm. uh, came. So were 20 sent to other states? I, I can't account for that. I know what our head count was. Um, so. Um, I can just tell you the people that were, were here, um, obviously uh, we took great care in making sure that we understood and accounted for everybody who got off the bus. All right, Nate Fox. Yes, sir. Mayor, um, good, good afternoon to you. In terms of the timeline, can you talk at all just for folks that are really trying to understand the process? I know we're addressing the um, immediate needs right now in terms of health care and all of that, but moving forward, what is a timeline that we're realistically giving um, these migrants in terms of when kids will be able to go to school, when folks will be able to work? What can we stand behind? Um, well, time some, line, time some of that is going to depend, obviously, on um, what they want to do, meaning are they staying here? Are they going elsewhere? Um, what are the um, 
uh, the circumstances um, that they're under. I mean, we had a couple of people last night who needed uh, medical care. Um, so it really is, I can't give you a definitive answer. We want to make them uh, comfortable. We want to make sure that we're attending to their needs. And obviously, there were a number of small children, some that were <clears throat> younger than preschool, so one or, one or two years old. Uh, but the older kids, we want to absolutely make sure uh, that they get settled into wherever they're going to be, whether it's here or elsewhere, and then obviously get them integrated into uh, schools. I got you. And then my um, second question is: I know you're not able to give a, a budget amount just yet. I did hear you say we're not, we haven't budgeted for this. But in terms of um, just speaking to critics who may say, "Hey, Chicago already has a, a huge homeless problem. Chicago already has a problem with um, mental health." How do we assure that those resources that may be devoted to those areas, um, that won't be cut by this move? Well, let me just push back a little bit on your premise. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's right to say that we have a huge homelessness problem. I don't know of any city across the country, certainly not any major or mid-city, that doesn't have people who are either on the street or housing um, in, in, uh, unstable. So we are doing that. Um, again, that work is led by some really great people at the Department of Family and Support Services. We are not going to be in a situation where we detract from the services that we provide our residents on a daily basis by opening up our arms and welcoming the migrants who came here to our city. But we're not, I, don't, I don't anticipate a circumstance where we're going to see that. Now, do we have unlimited funds? Of course not. No, no city government does. Um, but I'm also confident that our partners that are with us and the philanthropic community and generous individuals, if there's a need, that they will also step up because of that. We've seen that happen time and again. Right? Through the pandemic, we didn't anticipate mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we're going to have that kind of crisis. And very generous people stepped up took money out of their own pocket, provided food, clothing, shelter. I have no doubt if that need is there, we will, we will sound the, the clarion call and people will respond. Elvia Tribune. Actually, the Sun Times. Sun Times, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, speaking of funding, has the state offered the city any kind of financial assisting or funding for this group? And if so, will you guys accept it? And how will those funds be used? We never say no to money, but I'll, 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 let, uh, I'll let the deputy governor answer that question. All right. So, Madam Mayor, uh, uh, Willie Wilson, as you know, announced uh, for mayor today, put $5 million in his campaign fund. and. Uh, and said, had a series of criticisms of you uh, on the violence uh, and on your style of governing. Um, it's obviously going to be a, uh, a full tilt campaign. Um, is, is the criticism he levels at you fair? Well, I, I did not see uh, Dr. Wilson's uh, um, press conference, but I'll just say this. Look, it's that season. People are going to jump in. People are going to try to distinguish themselves. But what I'm going to do every single day is focus on doing the job that the people elected me to do. And part of that is making sure that we're focused on public safety, that we're focused on the pandemic, and that we're focused on truly equitable and inclusive economic development, in particular, as we have talked about today, making sure that we support our young people. I'm very comfortable with our record of accomplishment. There is that narrative that some like to perpetuate. But what I would say is look at the record of incredible success through a global pandemic, an economic meltdown, and all of the other challenges that we faced over the last two years. There will be plenty of time for me to talk about that. But right now, I'm focused on making sure I do the job every single day that the people of the city elected me to do, and that is to lead. He said he would abolish the uh, COVID vaccination mandate. Well, um, I think there will be a lot of people who ask a lot of questions about that issue. I'm very comfortable with what we have done to try to keep people safe. And you've got to lead by example. Every single court, every single court, every single arbitrator who has looked at this has said without qualification that it was our right as the employer to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to keep the workplace safe. And we've heard from our employees who are grateful because they don't want to come back to a workplace where they're not safe, where they don't know whether or not their neighbor has been fully vaccinated. 
No decisions that we've made over these last two years have been easy, but they have been guided by the data and the science, all in the interest of making sure that we save people's lives. And I hope this is the biggest pandemic and public health challenge of our lifetime. So um, as I said, there'll be plenty of time to talk about the politics. Right now, I'm focused on the people. Thanks a lot, Mayor Craig Wall, ABC7. Mayor, one of the things he said, particularly this morning, is that he voted for you in the runoff in 2019, but he said it was a mistake, quote, a hell of a mistake. Um, do you expect that this campaign is going to get ugly? And when will you formally announce your reelection plan? Well, as I said, there'll be plenty of time for the politics. But right now, all I'm focused on is doing my job of leading the city um, out of a pandemic and into economic prosperity. And just did need to ask you about, about the, the continued problem with crime on the CTA. What What is the city going to do uh, to deal with this? Uh, Dr. Wilson saying he'd bring back you know police on, on the CTA. But what is the city doing? Well, as you well know, Craig, uh, we put more resources uh, from CPD uniform officers and more presence. And that's starting to see dividends. We're making the arrest and the arrest hopefully um, themselves will be a deterrent. In addition to that, the Chicago uh, Transit Authority Board approved doubling of the non-law enforcement resources that are on the CTA. And we would ask, and I think this is happening, that writers, when they see something, to say something and report any kind of criminal activity. We literally can have zero tolerance for any kind of criminal activity on the CTA, and we'll be very aggressive in enforcing that as we have been. Damon Bradley, WGN. Hi, Mayor. Hi there. Willie Wilson won 13 wards during the general election, 11% uh, of the vote that he you're got. You're talking about the, the first election? Correct, the, the, Correct. yes, okay. the first election. Um, this morning he appeared with various members of the clergy, pastors from across the city. Um, what, why do you think black people support him so strongly? Well, I don't know that that assumption is correct. And as I said, there will be plenty of time for us to talk about the politics of this. Um, but what I'll say is this. There has not ever been a mayor in the city's history who has invested as much as my administration has in majority black wards, starting with our signature economic development uh, plan, which is Invest Southwest. You know this as well as people in across black Chicago. These neighborhoods have been starved for resources for decades, decades. And when you starve people of opportunity, you starve them of hope. And that's why from day one, while I ran, when I came in the door, what I've been about is making sure that we correct decades of disinvestment in black and brown neighborhoods across the city. Now, there are some people who think that's a bad thing. They want their city back. They being the people who profited from resources being clustered among a clouded few, but not reaching out to neighborhoods like this one. I make no apologies, and in fact, I say unequivocally, we cannot be a great global city if we starve our neighborhoods. The downtown is important. It is the heart that beats the blood into the rest of the city, but we can't move forward on any of the issues of the day, violence being chief among them. And Alderman Brooken said it right. If you don't create legitimate opportunities for employment and engagement in our neighborhoods, you are going to continue to see this constant, perpetual circle, cycle of violence, as we have seen for decades. So we are on the right path. We are on the right path. And this is about the future of our city. This is about who we want to be coming out of this pandemic and whether or not we're going to bring everybody along or whether or not we're going to return to the days when a few people got all the resources on the table and there was no room for anybody else. That's not the city that I want, and I don't think that's the city that the vast majority of residents want. They want a city that's fair. They want a city that includes them. They want to see that the policies that are coming out of the fifth floor and across our city are ones that reflect the reality of their lives. 
And that's what we have been about now for almost three years, and that's what we will continue to do. We will listen, we will collaborate, and we will be in partnership with all of our residents and not just the small, clouded few who feel like they should be the ones that dictate how city dollars are spent. Wilson says before today's announcement, when it became clear what he was announcing, someone on your team reached out to him. Is that true? And obviously, given that Wilson is a man of, of, of vast financial wealth and, and seems to connect with people well, is, is there a different way that he could be helpful to the city of Chicago right now, given now that you're the mayor? What, what would you, how can he help you? Well, look, I, I would say that there's, there's lots of ways that lots of people, particularly people of means, could be helpful. But they've got to do it through a lens of being a public servant and not to serve themselves. So people ask me all the time, what can I do to help? Let's bring some money in to increase the number of summer job opportunities that we give to our young people. Let's bring some money in to make sure that parks and libraries and other places of, of important connection across our city have the resources that they need to scale up the opportunities that they are providing for residents on a regular basis. If there are plenty of really civic-minded people across our city who are rolling up their sleeves and giving of their time, their talent, their resources to do just that. So it's, you judge people by what they do when people aren't looking, not by what they do when they see the spotlight on them. Chris Ty, Channel 2, last questions of the day. Speaking of the spotlight on them, Dr. Wilson had the spotlight on him in recent weeks and months with the gas giveaway. Mm -hmm. This morning he said that was not political pandering that he's given to folks in hurricane-ravaged Louisiana and in COVID-strapped California. I'm wondering how you, who days, weeks after he gave out those cards, you followed suit. How would you describe to the casual political observer whether this is political pandering as we're going through a gas spike, or how do you see what he did and your reaction to what he did? Well, let me just correct one premise. I don't react to what other people do, other than the residents of our city. The gas prices were spiking way before this stuff happened. We thought about ways in which we can constructively provide relief for our residents. Um, and we want to do it in a responsible way, in a way that's going to be impactful. And we've announced that a couple weeks back regarding both um, gas cards um, that people can get without having to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, um, and um, also in encouraging people who ride the CTA to provide them some relief as well. So we do what we do in response to what we know and see and hear from our residents. And our residents were telling us, and frankly, as blatantly obvious, when you see gas prices at $6 a gallon for regular, as they were, frankly, in many gas stations around the south side and on the north side and on the west side, it was obvious that relief needed to come, and that's what government should, should be about. Thanks, Mayor. That's a wrap. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank sir. you all.